We came to see you, Father. We came to hear a word from you. We thank you that you've already entered the building. We thank you that you're already here. Can somebody get excited that the Lord is already here? He's come to see about you this morning. So, Father, we thank you for your presence. It's so sweet and so tangible. We thank you that you are our Father. We can come to you for everything we need. And everything shall be good. Everything shall work for our good, Father. So we thank you. We bless you. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord? We want to welcome you to 180 Church, where you can join in praise and worship as we lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bless God in this house this morning. How many know he's Lord of all? Praise you. 
have, we have victory in Jesus. How many of you know that this morning? Hallelujah, we have victory. We shall never, ever be defeated. Come on, lift up your hands and give God some thanks for giving you the victory over whatever it is that you're going through. We give you honor, we give you glory, God, and we worship you, God, today. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God, he is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. shall be and I shall go in victory no weapon formed against me shall ever overtake me and because, and because God you are the greatest power is the greatest power and we shall never we shall never, never be
never be defeated. Sing it with me, ladies. And because God is the greatest power, is the greatest receive that over your life this morning. We shall never, we shall never be defeated. One more time. Be defeated. And because God, come on, receive because it this morning. God Don't be down anymore. Let the Lord lift you up. We shall never, we shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. And because God, and because God is the greatest power. Somebody just think about that. Somebody just think about it. Just think about every trial, every tribulation, every situation that you didn't look like it was working in your favor. At the end of the situation, you see that you came out triumphantly. That was because, and because God is the greatest power. I shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Hallelujah. Somebody just lift up a worship. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. We love you. We're going to sing about how we love Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How many know that victory is yours this morning? Yes, God. Yes, God. Victory is mine. Come on, receive it. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine, yes. And I told Satan, get thee behind because victory today is mine. I sing it again. Victory! 
told Satan to get behind me because victory today is mine. Victory today is mine. Thank you, God. Yes, it is. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many know the next part of that song? Yes, How many know the next part? As long as I hold my Come on, I need some, I need some sanctified oh, folks to help me. That's okay. I know it's snowing outside, but I need somebody to help me today. Yes, God. As long as I hold my peace and let what? Hold let the Lord fight then my battle. Victory. Now, some of you don't understand the precepts, the passages where that comes from. Mm. The children of Israel, they were promised a land, but there were Jericho walls. Jesus. Somebody say walls. Sometimes you need walls to fall so you can enter your promised land. Listen yes, to me. Yes, Every time God gives you a blessing, there is a battle. Yes, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God. Mighty through God. So you yes, may be God. asking a question, God, I know you promised me this blessing, yes, but yes, I need yes, to fight this battle. So how should I fight? Yes, Somebody say, hold your peace. Hold your peace. Somebody say, hold your peace. Hold your peace. And let who fight the battle? The Lord. As long as I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. Look at somebody and say, stop fighting, stop fighting. Stop. The Lord's got you. The Lord. Come on now, I want to encourage somebody today. Can we sing it one time? Can we sing it as a hymn? Not as a fast song, but can we sing it? As, Victory is mine. Come on, come on. Victory is mine. of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through you. Yes, God. We're asking you to forgive us for battles that we're fighting and you said you just need to be quiet and walk along these walls and you just need to be quiet and walk around these walls. Yes, and Father, we thank you that we'll keep on walking Jesus. because we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we may not understand how the victory will come, Jesus. but we know that as long as we hold our peace, Lord, you have already predestined, you have already predetermined, you have already pre-planned our victory, oh God. So we will not fight this battle because our battle is not against flesh and blood. Thank you that you've already disarmed every principality. You've already disarmed every power. You have already destroyed all spiritual wickedness on the cross. So we just got to hold our peace. Hallelujah. And know that if we keep praising, victory will keep coming, God. So we will give you the glory. We will give you the honor. And we will give you the praise, oh God, that victory is ours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, women, each other, put your hands together if you believe victory is yours today. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. I'm so excited. This is our third Sunday of the year, and we've gone through three messages entitled Reboot. Somebody say Reboot. Well, the first message in this series was how God wanted to reboot our resolution. Somebody say resolution. Remember how the disciples, they wanted to be great, and God, he wanted to reboot uh, their uh, resolution. Sometimes we resolve things and God wants to shut down our pride and he wants to power up our humility. Somebody say shut down the pride, power up humility. That was the first message in the series. And if you weren't here, you can go on YouTube or Facebook and I want you to listen to that message. I want you to share, share that message. 
the second sermon in the series was how God, he wants to reboot our perspective. Somebody say perspective. perspective. Sometimes God wants to reboot our perspective. He wants to shut down the way we see things, and he wants to power up the way he sees things. God wants to reboot our perspective to his reality. In the third message we learned last week about motive. Somebody say motive. God wants to reboot our motive so he can show us our hearts. And this week we are in Mark chapter number 10, verse number 13. Would you turn there with me, Mark chapter 10, verse number 13. And we will look at the area that God wants to reboot today. He wants to, in one step, somebody say one step. Remember what reboot means. Reboot means that in one step you can shut something down and you can power it up. Hallelujah. Somebody say just one step, just one step. How many know that if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you? Somebody say just one step, one step. If you take one step toward God, he can shut some stuff down and he can power some things up. Glory to God. And today, let us see what area God wants to reboot in our lives. Mark chapter 10, verse number 13. When you get there, say, Lord, reboot me. Lord, reboot me. Lord, reboot me. Mark 10, 13. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. I want you to picture this. What type of children were they? These were not adolescents. These were not teenagers. These were not young adults. These were the children that were utterly dependent, somebody say dependent, on their parents' custody and care. These were the type of children that you held in your arms and you were bringing them to Jesus. Now, how did the church folk feel about it? The disciples, what did they do? <laughs> what was the disciples, how, watch this, how did the disciples respond to the babies crying in the church? <laughs> How did the disciples respond to little children, little babies being brought to Jesus? Well, let's see what happens. And the disciples did what? The disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, how did he feel about it? He was what? He was greatly displeased or he was indignant. And he said to them, let the children come to me and do not what? Don't hinder the children from coming to me. I know they don't need demons cast out. I know they don't need blind eyes open. The disciples, they are not necessarily going against Hebrew culture. Because Hebrew culture, the Bible teaches us in the Torah that when your children are walking with you along the way, you ought to teach them the word. When they rise up in the morning, you ought to teach them the word. When you sit down and eat food with them, you ought to teach them the word. It wasn't that the disciples are going against Hebrew protocol and procedure. They just didn't understand what a little child can benefit. <laughs> they didn't understand why would I bring a little infant to Jesus. They didn't understand that, so they tried to stop the very ones that Jesus wanted to receive. Jesus was upset. Jesus said, hold on for a second, don't do that. Let the children come to me, don't hinder them, for to such belongs what? Now, what is the kingdom of God? Simply put, the kingdom of God is the way God does things on earth. The kingdom of God is not only the, uh, the kingdom that we are in, to inherit, it's also the kingdom of God on earth. That's why when we pray, we ought to pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on. It's God's way of doing things on earth. So Jesus says, don't stop the children because they are the very way that I do things on the earth. Let us continue. Verse number 15. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child that's utterly dependent on their parents, like a child that is utterly dependent on their father's provision and protection, just like a child that would be utterly dependent on their parents' protection and purpose, just like a child. If you don't receive the kingdom of God as a child, what happens? You will not what? You can't enter it. You can't even receive it. If you're not utterly dependent, you can't even receive it. If you are not utterly dependent on your heavenly father's provision and protection, you can never receive the kingdom of God. And what did Jesus do in verse 16? And he took them. Now watch this. 
Jesus takes the children in his arms, and what does he do? He blessed them, and he lays his hands on them. What's happening here in the text? You have a group of parents that have a revelation that the church folk don't have. You have a group of parents that reminds me of a grandmother that may be in a room today. What's happening in the text, it reminds me perhaps of a grandfather that's in the room, an uncle, a father, an auntie. Someone that said, come hell or hot water, I need to get that baby into the... Because I know that if I can get that child into the presence of God, God will do something in that child that my parenting cannot do. What's happening here in the text? We see parents having the same revelation that I believe many of you have today. You have the understanding that says that regardless if the child cannot comprehend, God can do something in that child's spirit. God can do something in that child's innermost being. God can do something in that child that my rules and my regulations and my values cannot do, but something happens in the presence of God when I take my child and I put that child in the presence of God, he begins to touch them and he begins to bless them. How do we know that? Well, let's go back to Hannah. The Bible says that Hannah could not have a child. The Bible says that Hannah was barren. The Bible says that Hannah could not produce and Hannah said God I want you to give me a son and if you give me that son I will make sure that I give that son back to you why is that Hannah understood that in the presence of God that God could do more for her child than she could ever do Hannah understood that in the presence of God God can lay his hands on Samuel God would have the ability to minister through Samuel, God had the power in his presence to begin to manifest the prophetic purpose in Samuel's life. And I believe I got a grandmama in the room today. I believe I got a grandfather in the room today, a father and a mother that will say, I need to get my child into the presence of God. The reason why I need to do that, because I know that God's presence can do more than I could ever do in my parenting with all my rules with all my regulations. I know that the presence of God can begin to mold this child and mend this child. Yes, this child may not be able to speak, and yes, this child may be yelling in church, but I know the anointing can break some stuff. I know that the anointing can begin to remove heavy bar. I thank God for every grandmother that said, I know you may not be going to church, but my grandbaby's got to get to church. I thank God out there for every single auntie and uncle that said, you may not go to church, but I need to get my niece in church. I need to get my nephew in church. I thank God for every baby mama and baby daddy, hallelujah, that say we may not be seeing eye to eye, but I got to pick those babies up and I need to get them into the presence of God because if God did it for Hannah, I know he can do it for my child. If God did it for Samuel, I know he can do it for my child. Now you may say, Pastor, I don't have little babies anymore. If God can do it for a little child. I know he can do it for a teenager. I know he can do it for a grown child. Come on now. I need a parent in here that can say, God, for me and my household, I know your presence can break every shackle. It can break every chain. You can do more in your presence, God, than a thousand anywhere else. In your presence, there is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And as long as I can get my child in your presence, I know that you will begin to mold them. I know you will begin to form them and fashion them. I know they may not be paying attention. They may be on their cell phone. Uh, they may be yelling. But I know the Holy Ghost can do something in their spirit. I know the Spirit of God can begin to move in their minds and move in their hearts. That's the reason why we sing victory today is mine. They may not understand it in elementary school. They may not get it in middle school. They may not get the revelation in high school. But in their 20s, when they go through a storm, in their 30s, when they go through a storm, in their 40s, 
when they go through a storm, they will remember that day when it was snowy outside. They'll remember that day in 2022 that you brought them to church. And they'll be reminded by the Holy Ghost that victory, victory, victory shall be mine. As long as I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory will be mine. If you believe that God's presence can help you, parent, put your hands together and give him glory. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I want you to help me announce the title of this message. Look at somebody and ask them the question, what type of parent are you? What type of parent are you? What type of parent are you? Parents, we are in a war today. And you will say, now, some of you will say, Pastor, I don't have any children. Do you have any young person that looks up to you? You, you fall in the category of a parent. Watch this. We are up under a spiritual battle today. Listen to me. Because this is the first generation where grandmama didn't take us to church. <laughs> this is the first generation, this is the first churchless generation. This is the first generation that the government can propagate a pandemic and we forget about the importance of coming to Oh, I wish I had somebody help me today. Y'all ain't helping. Y'all looking, but y'all ain't listening. Come on now. This is the first time where people can make pancakes and turn on technology and have praise and worship at the same time. Now, I know nobody around here would do nothing like that. I know y'all here today. But can I talk about somebody else? Isn't it interesting that this is the first time that pastors are saying you don't need to come to how is it that we forgot about what happens in the presence of Jesus? And the Bible's teaching us here that the parents had enough revelation, watch this, to take the children to Jesus. What was Jesus doing? It wasn't that Jesus was a politician. Jesus was not shaking hands and kissing babies. That was not what Jesus was doing. Jesus wasn't holding our children and just saying, oh, I want to talk to this child. No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus was doing. Jesus was giving the children, watch this, what only he had the ability to give the children. That's why the disciples said stop the children from coming because they didn't understand why the parents would expect the power of God to come. They didn't understand what was the purpose of a little baby. What was the purpose of small infants coming to Jesus Christ? Watch this. The Bible says John the Baptist was filled from his mother's womb with the Spirit of God. There are spirits assigned to you from your mother's womb. You got to hear this. Now, some of you will say, Sue, put the Bible on your back. Well, let's talk about Pharaoh. The Bible says two years old and old and younger, he wanted to destroy every single child. Now, some of you will say, well, Sue, talk to me more about that. Well, look at Herod in the days of Jesus. There is a spirit that has been assigned to you even as a child. And the, and the parents understood, if I can get my small child to Jesus, he can touch them, he will anoint them, he will bless them. And the same Jesus that cast out demons, the same Jesus that can break every yoke, the same Jesus that can walk on water, the same Jesus that can heal the sick. My child may not need healing now, but... But if he will lay hands on them now, he can prevent what will happen later. I wish I had somebody in there to help me. Watch this. Prayer is proactive and prayer is preventative. The presence of God is proactive. And the presence of God is preventative. The presence of God will deliver your children from things that you don't even know they need to be delivered from. The presence of God will protect your children from things that you don't even know they need to be protected from. They may outrun you, but they cannot outrun your prayers. I came to encourage somebody today. I came to encourage your grandmama today. I came to encourage a grandfather, a father. I came to encourage an auntie or an uncle, somebody that's been praying for a young person. I came to encourage you today. I know they may be cutting up right now, but don't write them off. God is still writing their story as long as you keep praying for them, as long as you keep bringing them into the house of God. You need to bring that child to the presence of God. You need to bring that child into the church. How many know special things happen in the church? I thank God.
God for my grandmother who would drive me to Wednesday night Bible study. I thank God for every time she would pick me up. I didn't understand everything the preacher was saying. I didn't understand everything God was doing, but he was anointing me. He was calling me. He was equipping me. I thank God for every grandmama out there, every grandfather out there, every mother, every father that kept their children in church. How many know God does something special? Somebody say God's doing something. God's doing something special in our children. Point number one, take your children so that Jesus could touch them and bless them. Because he can do more for your parenting than you can ever do. Point number one, write this down. You need to take your children. Well, um, pastor, you know it's snowing outside. Watch this. I would rather push through a natural storm to get into God's presence because you're not going to be able to survive the spiritual storm. You're not hearing me today. You're not hearing me today. Listen to me. I would learn how to press through the natural storm because I know my children will have to go through a spiritual storm. Point number one, you need to take your child so that Jesus can touch them and he can bless them. Why? Because Jesus, he can parent better than you. Jesus, he can parent better than you. Bring your child to church. This is the first time that young families are saying, we'll just sit home, pastor. The first time I'm hearing some of the most educated people, deacon, they look at me and they say, it's okay, pastor, we can just uh, YouTube it and Google it. How many know you can't Google the presence of God? Now you would say, pastor, how do you know that? Well, here it is. Ever since the exodus God has called his people to gather together in tabernacles, in tents, in temples, and in the church. If somebody says the church is a building, they have no idea what God's word says. The Bible says uh, that in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. You cannot get the fullness of joy if you're sitting at your house going to bed sad Baptist church. Uh, well, let me talk to my Pentecostals. Uh-huh. Uh, you can't uh, experience the fullness of joy if you're going to Pillow Pentecostal Church. You, you, you got your phone on halfway sleeping. Oh, praise the Lord. Ooh, this is my song. Preach, Pastor. Uh-huh. And your children are in another room learning more about TikTok than they do the Old and New Testament. Children in the other room, the enemy is bombarding their minds. Now you would say, Pastor, my child's too young. No, your child's never too young to be filled with the Spirit. Your child's never too young to be filled with the power of God. Your child's never too young to be filled with the anointing of God. There are some things, hear me, that God wants to break off of your lineage through your child's legacy. There are some things that God wants to break off your generation through your children being in the church. Point number two. We see it in verse 13 and in verse 14. Jesus, he sees what's happening. Has somebody ever did something to your children like the disciples? Have somebody ever tried to have your children have something held back? Has someone ever did something to a child you love or perhaps a child that's biologically your child? Have you ever found yourself saying, I can't believe they did that to my child? Have you ever found yourself saying, I can't believe that you're treating my child like this? Co-parents, may I talk to you? Some of you may say, Pastor, when my child goes over her father's house or her mother's house, things change. Things are different, Pastor. I can't believe he's acting that way. I can't believe she's acting that way. I can't believe that they're treating my child that way. Watch this, Jesus is. The Bible says he's Jehovah Rohi. He's the Lord our God who sees. And Jesus sees exactly what's happening to your child. Have you ever heard someone say, ah, children these days, children these days. They're all on their cell phones, children these days, children these days. 
I will testify it's not about children these days. It's about parents these days. What happened to the parenting that would say you need to be in the house of God because God needs to heal you. God needs to deliver you. And God, watch this, he is your father. I know you may not have your earthly father in your life, but God is your father. I want to talk to everyone that's fatherless. I want to encourage every mother out there, every grandmother that's parenting a child that is fatherless. I want to encourage you. God is the father they always wanted. God is the father they always needed. God will never leave them. God sees their pain. God sees their hurt. God sees how discouraged they are. God sees them. God sees them. And he can heal them. And he can deliver them. And he can set the captives free. If you believe God can do it, would you put your hands together and give him glory? Oh yeah, he can do it. Somebody say, the Lord sees it. The Lord sees it. The Lord sees it. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight this battle. The Lord sees it. See, watch this. My mother wasn't the type of mother that took us to church every Sunday. She didn't do that. She wasn't the type of mother that had us become members of the church. Hear me. But she was the type of mother that understood when I don't have the answer, I still got this bottle of anointing in me. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me today. She wasn't particularly a praying woman at the time. Uh, but she had enough revelation to know when my son is acting in ways that I can't control, <laughs> when he's doing things that don't make sense to me, I still got this bottle of a uh, of anointing oil. I remember coming in the house, Gary, on ecstasy and acid. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I remember coming in alleviated, and my mom would meet me at the front door. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And she would always rub something on my forehead. Officer Franklin, she would always rub something. Now, I didn't understand what she was rubbing on my forehead. But after she rubbed that on my forehead, Joe, my high would go down. I would say, where did my high go? I, I, I'm not, I, my buzz left me. Come on, I wish I had a witness in here. I thank God for my mother that every time I walked in, the glory to God, she would just rub my head with something and it would be oily and she would hug me, hallelujah. She wasn't a church-going woman, but she had enough faith to believe that God could touch me. She had enough faith to believe that God could bless me. She had enough faith to believe that God knew what was going on, and I'm wondering if I have a believer in here that says God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could ask or think by his power that works within me. Somebody say, God's working it out. God's working it out. Somebody say he's working it out. Point, point number three. We see this in verse number 15. Watch this. Your children equal God's kingdom. Your children, or if you're not a parent, you may say, Pastor, I'm not a parent. If you are an auntie, an uncle, you have children that look up to you. Maybe you are a big sister, a big brother. You have children that look up to you. Those children represent God's kingdom. Now, some of you would say, Pastor, how do you know that? The Bible says that children are an inheritance from the Lord. And they are an arrow. This is Psalm 127. The Bible says that children, little babies, they're arrows in God's hand. Now, what do you do in the arrow? Thank you. I love you today, Holy Ghost. You're helping me, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Now, what do you do with the arrow? You pull it. You pull it. Now, why do you pull it back? Because you create enough tension. The further the arrows pour back, I love you today, Spirit of God. The, fur the more tension that's created, the further that arrow can go. You're looking at some of your children and you feel like, why are you going? Why do you keep taking a step? 
You better look in the spirit. I know in the natural, it may not seem like they're going anywhere. I know in the natural, it may seem like they're failing. I know in the natural, it may seem like everything is falling apart. It may seem like things are getting worse and not better. I want to encourage you. God is pulling them back. Glory to God. Because he has a hope. He has a future. He has an expected end for them. I'm so grateful that God knows how to pull us back. He knows how to create enough tension because he wants to shoot you far. Because he wants to shoot your children far. Look at somebody and say, hold your peace. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight this battle. He will redeem their mind. He will redeem their heart. I know you may not be able to see that child, but keep praying for that child. Keep bringing that child to the very house of God and God will pull them back to shoot them forward for his glory, for his honor, and for his praise. If you believe that, put your hands together. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it may look like I'm going back, but I'm really moving forward. It may look like that held me back, but I'm really moving forward. I, I'm not looking in the natural anymore. I'm looking in the spiritual. And God is creating enough tension so that he can shoot them forward. Look at somebody and say, you're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. God has a hope for you. He has a future for you. Your children equal God's kingdom. Your children, it equals the way God does things in the earth. Remember last week, we talked about marriage. And this week, we're talking about children. Now, why is that? Because spiritual authority is connected to the relationship that a parent has with a child. Spiritual authority, you need to write that down. You can also see it in Ephesians chapter number 6. You can see the same rhythm. Spiritual authority is connected to the way that a parent relates to a child and a child to a parent. A child will never understand spiritual authority until they understand natural authority in the home. And when a child understands natural authority, they can walk in their spiritual authority. Your child represents the kingdom of God. It's equal to the kingdom of God. And God wants to use your parenting. That's why you got to stop fussing. <laughs> Look at somebody and just go, shh. Ah, just bring them into the house of God. Just bring them into the house of God. But pastor, their grades are acting up. That's okay. That's okay. I know they're acting up. Bring them into the house of God. But pastor, they're doing things they shouldn't do. I understand that. Just bring them into the house of God. Now you would say, pastor, how do you know that? Because when I was 18 years old, I had my pocket full with drugs. I was 18 years old. I walked in a straight gate church over there on Grand River in Livernois. 18 years old. Knew nothing about church. I walked in a drug dealer and I walked out a preacher and I know if God can do that oh y'all ain't hearing me oh y'all ain't hearing me today I know he can do it for your auntie for your cousin I know he can do it for your child I know he can do it for your son and your daughter you just gotta not give up and you gotta say God victory is mine Lord I'm trusting you I believe that my child represents the kingdom of God. I believe great peace will be upon my children. I believe that my children, they're walking in a legacy and a lineage. You got to start prophesying over that niece, over that nephew, over that cousin. You need to speak those things to be not. As though they already are. And know that the Lord can use his presence to parent your child. Everybody please stand. Do you have a young person on your mind today? Think about my niece, Kiara. She's run away from home. My niece, Kiara, she's uh, 16 years old. 15 now. 15. Kiara's 15. She's run away. She's been missing for six months. Maybe longer. My wife, she could, she could testify. I don't know the exact time. I think maybe six months. She's been missing. And my mother calls me worried. I don't love you, Holy Spirit. My sister calls me worried. But I remember when my sister was 14 years old and she ran away and never came back. And the same God that ran her down is the same God that's going to run my niece down. What's the young person you have on your heart today? Who's the young person that you're looking at their life? You may say, Pastor, I'm not a father, I'm not a mother. But you have a young person in your heart right now that you know that the presence of God needs to change them. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our young people today. If you're around a young person and you feel comfortable, I understand what's going on, but if you're a mom, would you just lay hands on your child right now? If you're a dad, lay hands on that child. Come on, Holy Ghost, move in this place. Father, we ask God, break the yoke. Destroy the stronghold. If you're pregnant, come on, just lay hands on your stomach. God, I thank you. Hey, that you touch, that you bless our children. Father, we pray now in the name of every in the name of Jesus for every son in this church, every daughter in this church, every young person in this church. Father, in the name of Jesus, break every shackle, break every chain. Thank you for the prophetic destiny. Thank you for the prophetic purpose. Thank you for the prophetic call on our child. Lord, thank you, Lord. You have a purpose for our children. God, thank you, Lord. You have a, a destiny. You have a future for our children. So we speak their names out. Come on, church. Lift your voice. Would you speak the name of that child? Lord, I pray for Isabella, Elijah, Naomi. Pray for Kiara. Come on, come on, come on. I need you to pray with me. Make it personal. Make it personal. Come on, pray for that niece. Pray for that nephew. I pray for my nephew Jalen. Come on, come on, let's pray. We've been preached to. Now let's pray about it. We've been preached to. Now let's pray about it. Holy Ghost, I thank you. Holy Ghost, I thank you. Every young lady in this church, keep them pure. Keep them holy. Holy Ghost. Ah, every young man, give them a desire for holiness and righteousness. Holy Ghost. Would you begin to start a revival amongst our children? That our children would love you. That our children would serve you. That our children would walk with you, God. Remove every ungodly influence. Ah, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Shut their eyes to things that are impure. Shut their eyes to things that are not holy. Father, in the name of Jesus. Remove every ungodly person out of their life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, I need you to pray with me, parents. Come on, is there an uncle that will pray with me? Is there an auntie that will pray with me? Father, we thank you right now. You're changing that child's life. We are in your presence for them. Look at us and remember them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You looked at Hannah and you remembered Samuel. Look at us, oh God, and remember the children in our lives. I need to hear your voice at a young age like Samuel. Children that need to hear your voice at a young age, oh God. We pray that our children will hear your voice at a young age. And they will love your presence. Father God, we pray that we will never be like the disciples to try to stop our children from coming to you. Father God, help us bring our children to you. We pray for every family that's struggling. They have small children. They don't understand the power and the purpose of your presence. They don't know the power of bringing that child to church. Help them understand that in your presence there is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, would you put your hands together and give God glory. Come on, 180 Church, would you put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, if you believe it for that child, put your hands together. We love you, Lord. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you get an offering in your hand today? Would you get an offering in your hand today? The Bible says, give not grudgingly nor of necessity. Give because God loves a... Now, why does he love a cheerful giver? Because he gave his son cheerfully. For God so loved, out of love, he gave his only, his one and only, his special unique son. He gave his son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can be saved through him today. If you would say, I need to give my heart to Christ, you can give your heart to Christ today. We're having baptism on the first Sunday of the month, communion, the first Sunday of the month. And if you want to come give your heart to Christ, and if you want to be baptized, let us know. We would love to introduce you to Jesus. We would love for you to identify his death, his burial, his resurrection through baptism. Would you please get an offering in your hand? Glory to God. Ushers, would you come? If you need an envelope, will you wave at us? If you need an envelope, would you wave at us? Lord, we love you today. Thank you so much, 180 Church. You are such a generous church. 180 Church, you are such a generous church. If you say, Pastor, you know, I want to join the church. I want to be connected to the church. We would love for you to be a part of this church. Our church will be better because of you. 
Thank you so much for your praise. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your offering. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Maybe the worship team has a song for us that we can rejoice as we give. Amen? Glory to God. Oh, we love you. Tragedies yeah. are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are drifting away. Economies down. No place seems to be safe. But you are my protection. Come on, Every step of the way. I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Folks without homes, living out in the street. And the drug habits, some say they just can't be. Muggers and robbers, no place seem to be. 